Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. All right, take a look outside, and the clouds have returned across the area. Those clouds are associated with our tropical system that is moving to the north and is going to bring us rain and maybe severe weather by tomorrow. We're going to be monitoring that carefully. And you, again, you can see on the satellite picture here with the clouds that are pushing in from the south. No rain yet, but that is going to change by tomorrow. Pretty warm, 87 in Champaign, 89 in Springfield. Temperatures here through this evening, kind of hovering there into the mid-70s. More about the severe weather threat for tomorrow when we come back, so stick around. WCA3 News starts right now. Now on WCIA3 News. People are continuing to make their voices heard throughout the area where they're marching tonight to make sure everyone knows Black Lives Matter. Olia Lewis resisted and fought the officer who approached her to cuff her. That woman was charged with the aggravated battery of a police officer. Now one group wants more than just those charges dropped. And one person is dead and several others hurt in different crashes in central Illinois. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. I have confidence in his record. I have confidence in his integrity. But some don't. A group in Urbana is urging city leaders to make changes, starting with the police chief. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Roscoe. This comes after more than a week of unrest following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Now dozens in central Illinois are asking for action in the name of racial justice. WCI3's Courtney Bunting has the story. After a week of protests and rioting throughout the country, some are asking Urbana City Council members to take action. A group called Stop Police Violence CU made a list of demands for council members. The first is to vote against reappointing Police Chief Bryant Serafin. City Council member Eric Jacobson says he's gotten dozens of emails about it, but he plans to vote yes. We would really damage so many things if we didn't reappoint him. The second demand is to drop all charges against Aaliyah Lewis. Lewis was charged with aggravated battery of a police officer after they say she resisted arrest during a shots fired call. While arresting her, Urbana officers hit her. Those officers were cleared after an investigation by the police department and the state's attorney's office. Now the city is moving forward with an independent investigation of the arrest. Jacobson says he has nothing against that, but feels there were some misconceptions about Lewis's case. Olia Lewis resisted and fought the officer who approached her to cuff her. And so it was necessary to use some level of force to get cuffs on her. To see this outpouring of distortions and falsehoods under the banner of racial justice, I find that Deeply troubling. In Urbana, Courtney Bunting, WCIA 3, your local news leader. The group is also asking for all officers involved in Lewis's arrest be put on leave while the case is being investigated. Urbana City Council members will meet tonight to consider reappointing Serafin. We reached out to Serafin and the Urbana mayor, but did not hear back. Now, Stop the Police Violence CU is also asking for the Citizen Police Review Board to be a meaningful oversight. Jacobson agrees there should be changes in how it operates, starting with the review of every citizen complaint. Right now, the police department reviews them first. The review board only handles them if a citizen appeals the response they get from police. Everyone is welcome at a local pride parade, except for police. Each year, Uniting Pride in Champaign holds a parade downtown. This year, local police won't be a part of that ceremony if they're in uniform. The group cited police brutality or overreach as reasons to sever ties. 
And now a follow up. The former Minneapolis police officer charged with killing George Floyd was in court for the first time today. 44 year old Derek Chauvin said almost nothing during an 11 minute hearing in which he appeared before a judge on closed circuit TV. He's currently housed in a maximum security prison. His lawyer didn't contest the bail, which was raised to a million dollars, and didn't address the charges. He also didn't speak with reporters afterward. Protesters are gathering in Muhammad right now. This comes after two groups that were set to march last week merge into a larger group today. WCI3's Jen Lask is live there now. So Jen, tell us what has happened so far. They started speaking here about 30 minutes ago. We've heard from multiple people already, including Chief Metzler, who says that he considers this a gathering, not a protest, because it's a gathering of like-minded people. And you can hear right now they're chanting, Black Lives Matter. We are about halfway through the speeches right now. And after that, we are going to see them marching from the administrative building over to the police department. And there they will be kneeling for 8 minutes and 46 seconds to signify the amount of time that an officer's neck was on George, uh, an officer's knee was on George Floyd's neck in Minneapolis. Now, they also plan to wrap up tonight with a look ahead at how they can continue confronting racism beyond today's gathering. Live in Muhammad, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, Jen, thank you. Every day last week, demonstrators in Springfield held an event near the Capitol in the wake of the death of George Floyd. One newly formed group doesn't want the conversation to end with protest. They're already looking at ways to make sure it doesn't. WCI3's Gabrielle Franklin has more on where we go from here. Some local activists, that some of them weren't activists last week. It's really kind of cool how we've gotten folks involved. It's kind of organically grown out of the people who have been out here at the Capitol every night. Things may be quiet at the Capitol here today, but for the past week, activists have been raising their voices, letting people know that they stand in solidarity with other parts of the country, calling for an end to racism. What's been happening down here has been conversation and education, and we realized that there's a lot of people who are angry and a lot of people who are ready to be out and rally, but they don't necessarily know how to take the next step. And so that's what why we came about was to try and help folks in the community take that next step and turn the passion into action. Now longtime activist John Keating and six others from the area have created EAT or Education in Action Together in hopes of keeping the conversation surrounding injustice at the forefront. They hope to start by bringing events supporting the movement to smaller cities and towns. These small towns is where a lot of the issues are harbored at and born from and it's not because the people in these towns are bad. It's because the people don't have interaction or exposure to different people, different cultures. And that's why we see melting pots in large cities have less issues with hate. In Springfield, Gabrielle Franklin, WCI 3, your local news leader. The group is helping to organize a demonstration in New Berlin this Thursday at 6.30, as well as Saturday at 5 in Pawnee. They're also planning a teach-in to help people learn their rights and how to interact with police. One person is dead after hitting a semi head-on. It happened this morning on Highway 36 in Douglas County. State police say a woman was driving east when she went into the westbound lane and hit the truck. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Her name hasn't been released. Two people were taken to the hospital after a two-car crash near Thomasboro. It happened at 2100 North and 1800 East this morning. Sheriff's deputies say the two cars crashed after one of them didn't stop at a stop sign. Both airbags deployed. The victims will survive. No word on any tickets. And crews are investigating after a pickup truck pulling a trailer rolled over just east of Ludlow this morning. Happened at the intersection of County Roads 1900 East and 3500 North. A pickup truck and trailer flipped on its side. The Champaign County Sheriff says a car blew the stop sign and hit the truck. Both drivers were hurt, but the sheriff says they should be okay. A dog was shot and killed after it attacked an officer executing a search warrant. It happened in Rantoul this morning near the intersection section of Abram Drive and West Frost. While investigators were searching the property, the dog broke out from its kennel and immediately attacked the officer, biting him. 
The policeman fired one shot, killing the dog. The officer was treated for bites and cuts to his hand. The original incident is still under investigation, as well as an internal review. The coronavirus has been tough on everyone. Which mayor has resigned because of the pandemic? And also tonight, it's back to business. Some orange and blue are once again on campus and ready to get going. And the clouds have increased here. These are the outer bands of tropical depression crystal ball that is heading in our direction. Let's recap today. We actually made it all the way to 91. It was another warm one. All right, when we come back, gusty winds in the forecast. We're talking severe storm potential and when things will start to cool down again. Coming up.